What is a slip disc? Back pain is one of the top reasons to go for a doctor's consultation. Everyone on this planet suffers at least once this back pain in one year. Many people many times a year. Slip disc diagnosis itself will lead to a missed beat in many. Not really. Slip disc condition is not that serious and with some extra precautions you can be totally out of pain. I will give you some important tips and tricks to beat this slip disc. Let's get into slip disc in this video. Hello friends, welcome to DocLogs channel. I am Dr. Arun Naik, a doctor for 30 years and a neurosurgeon for 20 years now. Dialogue with your doctor is called DocLog. In this channel, we have doc logs related to brain and heart health, lifestyle diseases, cancer, spine health and preventive health. We also give here simple, effective tips and tricks to put you on the positive side of your health. With that said, let's get started. In one of my videos, I have described what is a sciatica pain, what causes it, what are the symptoms and treatment. Please watch that video to understand the back pain juggernaut a little better. One of the commonest cause of sciatica, especially young adults, is herniated discs. Now, what is a disc? Your backbone is not a single bone, friends. It's a collection of 33 bones which are arranged beautifully in your body, forming an S-shaped curve. Between two bones or vertebrae, there is a gel-like material called a disc. This disc is a shock absorber for your body. It absorbs all the jumps and bumps we have during our day. These discs make us mobile. Without these discs, our backbone would be one long wooden log-like structure with no movement at all. Usual number of vertebral discs is 23. You may have one less or one more, that's okay. When there is a vigorous trauma to the disc, it ruptures. Trauma I mean lifting heavy weights or jumping from the stairs or driving long distances. Once the disc is damaged, it comes out of its place and ventures near your nose causing compression. This is called sciatica pain. Slip disc is known by many names. Disc herniation, disc prolapse, disc bulge, disc rupture, disc extrusion and many more. Let's stick to commonest layman term, slip discs. Now what are the causes for slip disc? A slip disc occurs when the disc gets damaged and the gel inside comes out. Commonest cause of slip disc is a sudden lifting of heavy object. What happens is that the disc slips out of its confines and comes in touch with your nerve root. This disc material is a gel and it irritates the nerve to cause intense pain. Overweight individuals are also at increased risk for a slip disc because their discs must support the additional weight and the backbone fails to support their own weight. Result is the slipping of the disc between the bones. Very weak back muscles and a sedentary desk job lifestyle may also contribute to the development of a slip disc, primarily because of loss of equilibrium of back muscles and core muscles. Smoking cigarettes is another important, often neglected cause of slip disc. You heard it right. Smoking is synonymous with lung cancer, we all know. But what about a slip disc? Yes, smoking is shown to be destructive to the vertebral body parts in the long run. Smoking also causes thrombosis or blockage of tiny arteries supplying the backbones. It also is supposed to drive the disc outer surface forcing the disc content to squeeze out. Disc also slips in cases of fall from height or an accident. Sudden jerk puts the disc under pressure and pulls the disc out of its place. In the elderly, the disc dries out and the dry disc no more stays in its place. It starts to come out and press on the nerve. Prolonged driving is another cause of a slip disc. 
Sitting and driving for long hours puts your backbone and the discs under tremendous pressure. Hence, heavy vehicle drivers are at risk of developing slip disc. Sports injuries are very important causes of slip disc. Any sports injuries, if severe, can push the disc out of its place. Motor vehicle accidents need special mention here. I keep seeing patients involved in motor vehicle accidents coming with severe back pain and the scan shows a disc herniation. I want to stress here that slip discs can happen at any location, neck, back or low back and symptoms are different for different locations. Now what are the symptoms of a slip disc? Commonest symptom of slip disc is, well, you guessed it right, pain. The pain may be in the neck, back or low back depending on the location of disc prolapse. In the neck, the pain may radiate to your arm, forearm and hand fingers. In the back, pain may radiate to your shoulder blades and the chest. In the low back, the pain typically radiates down your butts to back of the thigh and back of the knee and leg sensors. The pain is excruciating neuropathic kind of a pain which is unbearable, often making even small movements impossible. Pain mostly starts suddenly after the trauma or lifting weights. Often only way to relieve pain is to lie down on the bed. Next symptom is tingling numbness, also called as pins and needle sensations. This is a sensory symptom more like a burning sensation in some patients. The tingling numbness sometimes leads to complete numb limb which is not a good sign. Immediate consultation with spine specialist is needed. Along with this, many patients also develop motor symptoms like weakness of hands and feet. Weakness of grip and writing difficulty is often seen in slip disc happening in the neck bones. Failure to grip footwear is classically seen in slip discs happening in low back bones. Once this happens, you need to rush for consultation because once the motor symptoms develop, it means your nerve root is severely compressed and it's in danger. Imbalance while walking and collapsing at the knee is an ominous sign of danger. Later stages of disc herniation causes what is called as sphincter disturbances, meaning loss of control of urine and feces, which is again a bad sign. One should not wait till all these things happen. When to consult a doctor? In fact, back pain is one of the commonest cause for a doctor visit. Everyone has back pain for some days in a given year, isn't it? But when not to neglect your back pain? Friends, listen carefully. Any back pain lasting for more than three weeks should not be neglected. Don't neglect your back pain if you have back pain and that pain goes to your butt and legs. If your walking is becoming difficult, if your footwear is slipping from your foot, if you are passing urine in your clothes, these symptoms if you neglect then there will be irreversible damage to your nerves and even if you take treatment thereafter your symptoms will last forever. How to diagnose a disc herniation? Friends, back or neck pain is a symptom, not a disease. It just means that there is compression on the nerve. Nothing less, nothing more. I do a complete neurological examination to see any muscle is weak. Depending on their condition, I may ask for a few investigations. Number one, nerve conduction test. This is a simple neurophysiology test which allows us to measure the conduction in your sciatic nerve. If there is a delay, that means your nerve is under pressure. I may ask for an X-ray of the backbone or an MRI scan which will tell me what is causing the pain. Again, these tests are not ordered in that exact way but we doctors take into consideration so many things. If the suspicion of a slip disc is straightforward, then we ask for an immediate MRI scan. MRI scan will tell us if the disc is herniated, if the nerve is compressed, if so, how much the compression is. Depending upon the severity, we give treatment. How to treat slip discs? First things first friends, main problem in slip disc is pain. I start with medications immediately to soothe the inflamed nerves and tense muscles. This course lasts for about 3-4 weeks depending on the severity. Some local application gels also give good relief of pain. 
Spinal arthrosis like neck collars and the lumbar beds will restrict movements and give pain relief. In some cases, physiotherapy will definitely help in bringing down the pain and inflammation. 95% of the stiplies respond well to these conservative methods. About 5% of the cases need some intervention to be done by spine specialists. We also give epidural steroid injections in some cases. In extreme cases, surgical intervention is needed. The surgery is called a microdiscectomy and it is done using minimal invasive methods. I give an inch of long incision in the back and remove the offending disc and release the nerve root. The pain relief is immediate and no more interventions are necessary in most of these cases. What is the outlook after surgery? Most patients join their work in a few weeks time. I always advise and teach them good spinal exercises to keep their spinal balance optimal. Spinal and abdominal muscles need to be strengthened this way to avoid disc herniation at other levels. I also educate them regarding the posture, importance of maintaining good posture, especially office workers. Extreme carefulness should be exercised when you are lifting weights. Always bend your knee and kneel down and lift things very close to your body. Never bend over and lift it. This way you are putting a lot of stress on your vertebral column. Keep it in mind always friends. Stop smoking to avoid damage to your spinal column. Maintain an optimal weight so that your backbones can support it. My take home points friends. Maintain good posture at work, driving, walking and daily chores. Avoid smoking and maintain a healthy active life. Don't lift heavy weights with abnormal posture. Even if you develop a slip disc, it is not the end of the world. Seek medical specialist attention before it goes out of control. With this friends, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you like the content presented. Please like and share this video with your near and dear ones to put them also on the positive side of their health. I have many videos on back pain and spinal health friends. Please watch them to get a complete 360 degree information of your spinal health. If you are new here, please consider subscribing to DocLogs. Hit that bell icon to get instant notifications of my new videos. If you or your loved ones ever had a slip disc, please share your thoughts in the comment section below and tell us what steps did you take and how was your recovery. I'll be back with another interesting DocLog very soon. Till then, live awesome, feel awesome and take good care of your health.